So this morning in the post, I received a uh, new Fitbit Flex device. The, the old one I've had for, I think, probably a year now, and it's been experiencing some problems over the last uh, month or two. And its behaviour has been a little bit odd, kind of immediately wanting to be recharged again, displaying problems, odd light sequences, and kind of locking up a little bit. Uh, it's quite unusual behaviour trying to identify what could be wrong. Um, the the device itself and and then and then last year I guess the, the biggest thing was the end of last year one of the the lights stopped working it was really odd it um, I've never really found LEDs to fail like that it's uh, they tend to be quite robust um, so I kind of contacted Fitbit they quite happily arranged for a replacement and that was uh, delivered over Christmas and I've got that today transferred over and I'm up and running, so which is uh, all good. What I'm going to do is try and uh, dismantle this device and uh, see if there's any any sign of any obvious damage inside. I'm expecting it to be a very, very tightly integrated device. Then, so it's kind of a little slimline kind of uh, battery on the back, along with a single circuit board with some very, very, very small pitch devices. I'm, I'm sceptical as to whether or not I'm going to be able to see anything obvious in there. But um, it's possible there might be some kind of uh, sign of water ingress which could have caused these issues or maybe some kind of physical damage, stress damage which might have caused problems. But either way it should be quite interesting to take a look inside and see how these run. Maybe even kind of take a look at the, the kind of current these things draw. Because it's uh, constantly recording data, it's doing a lot of things all the time. And certainly with the Bluetooth connections running. And uh, it's remarkable that these things can last uh, and so long on a single charge and on a battery that is so small. So this is the old device. There's a, a little bit of a, kind of flaking around the edges. Part of that is uh, has been my kind of uh, kind of starting attempt to open this thing up, but um, obviously the surface is kind of uh, coated very slightly or kind of a little bit of lamination, and that's starting to peel in the odd place. But if I tap it, hopefully you can see the the issue I've been having. So there's only a single... There we go. So you can see there's only this one real light that comes on now. I mean obviously the second light failed before Christmas and then very recently these last uh, kind of three lights have been behaving very peculiarly. You can see that um, it's only... you can just about make out something down there but there's not much. It's reached kind of the point where it's just the first one that's working. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what's going on in there. I'm not quite sure what the best way is of opening these. I think the the it's clearly a two-part device. Um, these two pieces in here kind of pulling apart, and so I think the best course of action is just to carry on with a knife, very kind of carefully around this edge. It's kind of cutting through, cutting in, hopefully breaking through any glue that might be holding it in place. And then with any luck these two halves will uh, free up. I'm hoping these contacts inside, with the, con the charging contacts on the bottom, they hopefully they're not holding anything in. These are either going to be just pushed in from the other side with some kind of a gasket around to seal it from water. Or it's possible these are moulded into the plastic and then make contact with a board through another set of kind of touch contact. But uh, we'll see that when we get it open. So to get this open now, I'm just going to very carefully just continually go around, scoring into the edge here just to try and clear it up. It's probably going to take a while, but I don't want to damage anything inside. There's not going to be any wasted space, I certainly don't want to try and kind of cut into this with any kind of uh, saw. So I've scored around the edge quite a bit here, but uh, I'm worried that this top in this top piece here kind of inserts, and so there's going to be a lot of glue around that point, but I'm not going to be able to get to, so I think at this point uh, a little bit of force might be the best way of uh, freeing this thing up. Just kind of very carefully. Okay, the top cap is off. 
This is the first uh, thing you can see on the top there in the light. It's that wavy pattern that is quite possibly going to be the Bluetooth antenna on there. So we've got this inner piece here. I wonder if that's going to slide out now. Oh no, that is uh, a little loose. Looks like it's the circuit board in there. So it looks like I might have just clipped the top of the boards there with the lights. See the lights illuminating in there. And there's a very odd flicker on that last one. So I'm going to have a dig around with this and see if it's possible to remove any more without damaging the rest. I've just removed the antenna. The antenna was held on with a single solder joint to the board around this point here. This was loose. Um, I haven't had any problems with Bluetooth, so I suspect that it, um, it was damaged when I kind of pulled this open. You can see you've got the silver casing of the lithium kind of battery pack on the back, and a single PCB on the side here. There is some glue running around this edge here. I'm going to see if I can remove that with a knife, and hopefully I might be able to slide this board out. Because if I don't, and if this board is kind of glued in, then I think it's uh, going to be very difficult to kind of free this up without some serious damage. So I've been removing the uh, glue around the top of the uh, parts here and uh, I spotted this kind of uh, piece of, uh, kind of loose plastic and uh, it's a bit unusual. You can see it's a piece of plastic here but there was this uh, gridded pattern on it to look like an antenna and uh, it's not going to be the Bluetooth antenna. I mean that was uh, that's this little piece here and that was in the top. Um, I've done a little bit of work with uh, RFID tags before and it's only looked like one of those and, uh, and I've just given it a try and it is. So I zoom out here. Now it's quite possible this is a, a well-known uh, feature but uh, it's something I certainly wasn't aware of. If you hold it up to the device it detects it and loads the application. Um, I don't remember this being a noted feature, but it, it certainly makes sense. Uh, it works through the wristband. And so that's the, the other one I've got, if you hold it up to the side. Um, it just about works anyway. It's making some funny noises anyway. So it did have that one working as well. I mean, if you look at the tag data in here, this is what I pulled up a little earlier. This is one here. So we've got a kind of two bits of information in here. It fires up an application, and it also contains a uh, string. Now, I'm fairly certain this is the uh, MAC address for the device. And so this... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, it might be used during setup within the application, or it might be a feature that wasn't quite fully implemented, or maybe it, it is kind of fully described and I'm just not aware of it. But um, there's certainly the possibility to kind of set up and expedite um, the configuration and the synchronizing of this device. So if there's a lot of devices in proximity, then it knows the MAC address of this and can then trigger the right kind of process. So it's, uh, it's quite an odd, interesting find, that. So um, I'm just going to go back to dismantling this. The board is loose, but it's not been freed up. Um, so what I'm going to do is hopefully continue to try and move some of this plastic here and try and release it. I expect this RFID tag to be a loose, possibly tacked on. Um, there's certainly no reason for it to be connected to the board itself. So I've managed to get this device out. I had to cut away a lot more of the uh, plastic but in the end it kind of pulled out. As I uh, thought, the metal contacts at the bottom are embedded in the plastic and they fit onto the 
device here by a couple of metal contacts. See at the bottom, these uh, metal clips you might just be able to make out. And so this device pushes into and clips onto the battery contacts at the bottom. So on the back we've got the vibration motor and the battery. Now I'd forgotten about the vibration motor. It's the battery is uh, significantly smaller than I was expecting. Um, there's even a little bit of uh, so even a little bit of uh, free space in the middle, so it's possible the battery could have been slightly larger if they wanted. So I'll trample that off in a little minute, in a minute, and see how it is. On the front, we've got uh, LEDs at the top, a little kind of uh, crystal oscillator, followed by a larger chip in here. This is uh, it's covered by what I believe is a heat sink type device. Um, it's cracked a little bit and opening it up. I think it's pro probably just there to kind of spread the heat a bit. Past that, we've got two other ICs. There's going to be a, a kind of a three axis accelerometer in here. So it's most likely going to be one of those. Uh, being up this end, near to the, the antenna connection, this is first device here, it's probably going to be the Bluetooth uh, chip. And uh, a little further down, we've got this uh, label here. And I've uh, got two numbers on here, certainly encoded into the same barcode. One of them is the MAC address of the device. So it's quite possible that um, as part of the kind of production line, the MAC address was identified from this label. The correct uh, RFID tag was then located and placed, or it was programmed and then attached to the device, and wrapped and inserted. The insertion of this is quite possibly going to be a manual process in there. I can't be quite impressive if it was machine, but um, it certainly kind of suits a, a manual kind of packing environment. So you kind of wrap the label around the slide, around the side, and I push this uh, in, dab a glue on the top, and kind of lock it all into place. Let's uh, try and remove the rest. I mean, this uh, barcode here, this label here, appears to be attached to a similar kind of a uh, heat spreading device. I mean this does seem to be working to some extent. I don't know if it'll... Yes, yeah, so there's one light which flashes. I did uh, lose um, the two extreme ones when I was removing it sadly. The, um, the second one in was the original faulty light. Now, I don't think I damaged it, but it's pretty hard to tell. There's definite discoloration against the first two. I don't think I can get in particularly close, but there's a... Uh, they are kind of quite a vibrant orange colour, and yet the, the one on the left uh, isn't. There's no apparent... Um, any kind of obvious water ingress along here. It is a very fine PCB, but then it is kind of fairly rigidly held in place. At the this end here, in addition to the mechanical contacts, there's also these two rubber mounts to give it a kind of a nice uh, firm fitting. And obviously, the top end had some glue around the outside to kind of reinforce that. So I'm skeptical there. I don't think I'm ever going to find out what was actually wrong with this, but um, doesn't mean you can find out some interesting things about the rest. So I'm going to see if I can remove these uh, heat sinks and uh, see if it's possible to identify these chips. I've prized the uh, heat sinks off the top. They're rather peculiar types, some kind of a, what appears to be like a semiconductor type um, material, but um, they kind of flaked off in the end. And so it got revealed the kind of details of the two chips. As I kind of thought, the one at the top is a Bluetooth device, I and mean, it matches up to a, a Nordic module, kind of NRF8001 which is just kind of a full kind of stack Bluetooth uh, kind of low energy module. And then at the bottom is the main processor. It's an incredibly reflective uh, coating on the top. But if you get it at just the right angle, you can read the uh, details on it. It's an ST microelectronics device. I have kind of a, a large kind of ARM Cortex processor in there. And that's uh, capable of a lot of things, including kind of USB and uh, LCD kind of support, neither of which are really in use for this model. But uh, it does the job, and imagine it kind of stores the, the relevant data in there. 
as well. Um, I'm going to disconnect the battery now and see if it's possible to uh, take a look at the current draw. I don't imagine I'm really going to be able to simulate uh, um, a kind of much of a current drain on this thing, given its current state. Um, but it might be interesting nonetheless. So I've got an ammeter hooked up in line here. Uh, unfortunately, it's not um, really giving me anything useful. This uh, meter is uh, nowhere near accurate enough to get down to the kind of uh, low current levels that um, I'd expect to see from this device. I did get a couple of uh, a pair of readings though, um, but hard to kind of replicate. But when charging, the battery is drawing around about uh, 14 milliamps, and uh, that was kind of fairly consistent. I mean, with the uh, the kind of the details for this device state it has a two to three hour charge time and um, that would kind of put the battery capacity at around about 30 to 40 um, milliamp hours which is um, I think roughly what I'd expect uh, based on the size of other batteries around that. When it was charging, when I disconnected it from the charger it did go into a kind of a high current draw mode around about uh, uh, 1.1 milliamps. I mean that is uh, quite probably um, uh, kind of Bluetooth switched on, kind of actively processing at that point. And then uh, shortly after that it switched into this uh, low power mode. And so uh, it looks like it um, runs from a, a negligible current draw. Uh, a few microamps, maybe 10 microamps or so, typically switching up to a higher kind of capacity for other situations. Um, but without uh, more sensitive equipment, I'm not going to be able to really get any more information from this, sadly. But, um, it's interesting to see inside of this thing. There's, um, it's interesting, the only salvageable thing is going to be the uh, vibration motor here. Uh, these batteries, certainly one that's been in use for a year or more, um, it's, it's not worth salvaging, nothing like that anyway. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't see what was wrong. Um, I wasn't really expecting to, anyway, given the, the density of this device. But, um, but yeah, there, there certainly is no um, certainly no obvious water ingress, anyway. And the RFID tag is uh, an interesting addition. And now that I know it's there, it could be as uh, useful just in a uh, daily use. So that's the end of that.